500 every day, every in, in the morning and the, in the evening. And I do not have it. So one people will, will, will come visit the, the people for hospital. So I told them they give me 6,000 naira. So I use it to go buy medicine. After that, the, the thing finished. We don't have anything where we go eat in that hospital. I will carry this my son for back. I will go stand for that meal for that Asakoro hospital. When they beg all those uh, rich, rich people, I tell them that I do not have money to, to feed. And uh, those my brothers, those my, my brother-in-law, they, they, all of them get money. That they, they, they cannot, I call them, they say, they, then they come, then they come. Then they come all the time, I do not see them. And now after we did, we come off for that uh, hospital, she, we, we, we come back. Within a week, the sickness can't start again. We rushed him into hospital. Within seconds, a man just died there. We carry him, rush him, carry him to go, go village immediately. We bury him. You were not alone. Cause he's always been with you You are not alone He is right there back We are now in Yaga We are in Naya Police Barrack We are in the house of uh, Mrs. Susena Ibrahim I have come to pay her a visit Want to know how she and the family they are Good afternoon Good afternoon auntie You are welcome Thank you You know we are from Rock of Ages Foundation Yes And uh, I want to know what made you to join Rock of Ages Foundation. My husband died the year 2012 when I came back for village to even eat. Feeding my children is very difficult for me. So a friend of mine invited me to that place. And the very day that I stepped my leg there, they are sharing food, which I don't even expect that I will receive that. Uh, uh, that uh, gift that day. So when when I went there, since that time, everything is okay for my life. So I thank God for my life. So what happened to your husband? My husband, over eight years, is sick. So when they see my children, there is no way my children will go to school. Even with me, with me with them, to even feeding is very difficult for us that time. So we did for the supper nurses almost eight years before God taking life last year. So I go here, go hospital, go here, go here. I didn't have anything. All anything we have, everything has finished. We collected loan about seven hundred thousand. Because we think that the the issue of the sickness will be over. No way. I run to my the family and say, see the problem that we inside, we didn't have anything, feeding no day, children, no one to go to school. They say there is nothing consigned them. And I cry, come back. Last year when he died, the trouble continued. Even when he is sick, I they always took him to prayer house to prayer house. So the family say, why I take the, my husband to pray a house to pray a house that nothing concerned them with me and my children. Even now, now my children, two of them, no one go to school. The other one is daddy that uh, daddy give us uh, 10,000 10, that I use inside to pay in junior while before he can make to take an exam. So you are among the last set of people who gave money? Yes, right? yes. And that money helped me a lot. So what do you do now? Yes, I'm now managing granny engine. Okay. Um, so just that granny in the desk one? Yes. If there is no like, for most time there is no... No. And if you see the granny engine, what man can do? That's why I wait at the inside. That engine, you have to wind it, wind it, wind it before it starts. Like how much do you make in a day for me? So as marketing no day now, sometimes I go grant three hundred, sometimes if you market no day, you go get hundred, one fifty a day. Because we they many. We get the granny uh, we we'll get the granny engine. Apart from the granny engine, what else can you do? The the business that I'm doing before I did 
buy oil, go and sell and go back. That is the business that I'm doing before. Which type of oil? Red oil. Where they go back? For village. Which village? Yeah, Kogi State. Okay, you go to Kogi State to buy the yeah, oil. Yeah, oil. Like uh, 24 jerry cans, sometimes they have money, they buy 30 jerry cans, come and sell. Maybe the five, uh, five days, uh, eight days in the market, I'll still go back again. So how about you need to start such yeah. business? See, there is any, anything where God touch uh, How you. much do you, like, where you are doing it, how much are you using? Okay, like the time when I'm doing it, where things low cost, it's 150,000. I can tell my husband, I collect a loan for one daily contribution woman. And uh, one fifth I collect. So that's yeah. you go, you I go with the balance the woman the life. I, if I collect one hundred and fifty thousand, if I collect study, I they bring the oil go back. Between that six months, the woman give me. I don't pay her her money back. Uh, how much is the interest in the money? Yeah, if you collect one hundred and fifty thousand, the interest is fifteen thousand by a month. Fifty thousand yeah, by a month. By a month. Mm. Oh. So why is it that the woman cannot give you the you say I didn't have a husband that when the money scattered from my hand, who who she will hold and pay the money back to her? Did she pray for the money to scatter? It's tough. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Thank God for everything. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Save one widow and you have saved a nation. Save two widows, you have saved a generation. These widows are not lazy. They are hardworking. If they can work with 10,000 through small-scale business, Mama put frying akara. They are, they, they are normal frying akara. Yam. If they could build up with this little amount of money, some of them, their children, goes about to make sure that they package pure water well and then sell, cook small food, go to different camps where, uh, where companies are doing their project, they will be there to sell. If they could make an ends meet with that, you can add more value to them. But there is a major project we have at hand. And that major project is a very, very big project before men, but before God is a small project. Some of them, when we move, our teams may move around, they discover so many of them have been thrown out of their houses. We were paying their house rent, but some of them we can't meet up sometimes because of financial challenges. And then we decided to say, okay, let us build building that we carry like a school hostel at least 10 rooms each opposite where we can accommodate about 20 widows who are being sent out where they are each of them to have a room and then we looked at it and then going by the estimate they were given to us at least we're looking at this estimate of about 12 million naira to build that kind of street building in order to make it partition it for each widow one one what does it take? It takes 10, 12 million. Did you hear me say 12 million? How will 12 million come? It's the Lord who owns the mission. He will make the provision. And if you hear this voice and the Lord lays it in your heart, I will pray for you. If the Lord lays it in your heart to join in this vision, I will pray with you. Right now, God will give you that in which you desire and then it will make the provision available. By the next year, we are looking forward again of moving this program to a bigger ground where we will accommodate 5,000 widows. 5,000 widows, giving these 5,000 widows food items and then giving, providing for them 10,000. 10, Recently, we have people who have come to give them a skill acquisition, train them on how to make soup, hats, uh, lotions, Train them on how to make all that things available. It will only take money. And after training, you need to equip them. God is ready to use you. There are programs for the widows and their children at festive periods to collectively share in the joy of the season instead of brooding over the loss of their family heads. Our trust is currently focusing on the widows in Nigeria, but we believe that this assistance should spread across the globe. Twenty third June two thousand and six. 
International Widows' Day was announced first by Cherry Blair at the House of Lords luncheon on May 26th, given by the Lumba Trust and formally announced at the United Nations on October 21st, 2005, in the presence of Kofi Annan and Cherry Blair. I can say for this year, 2013, International Widows' Day, about six million naira was spent. And it's not even enough to cater for their problem. When you get close to some of them and you hear their cry, what touches me a lot is when they start complaining about their children, most of their children, maybe some of them having six children before their husband died, they will all drop from school. And when they drop from school, the male, some of them become wayward, going to arm robbery, fighting for a way to survive. You will hear them say, ah, my son is in police custody or is in SARS or has been arrested. And some of their daughters go into prostitution. Some will pregnant and they will still come back to the same mother who is left alone to take care of her and the children and even the grandchildren. So it has not been easy with them. And I don't like listening to them sometimes when they talk because you feel like crying. But when you cry in their presence, you are not, you're not even encouraging them, but rather you're contributing to their problem. So sometimes I shy away to the, from their problem, but when we come, we think on what to do and how to handle them. In a world of over 245 million widows and countless orphans, yet their problems are often ignored. The Rock of Ages Empowerment Foundation hope to break the silence of their suffering in order to support them to play an active role in the building of their families and their communities. They are often subjected to much prejudice and harsh living conditions such as absence of suitable shelter, food, education, coupled with the discrimination and psychological abuse faced by these women due to gender inequality. Thus, widows and orphans frequently live in poverty and illiteracy as their children are forced to drop out of school and take up menial jobs with the girl child usually becoming the victim of sexual exploitation. Under the six MDGs, one is to fight against women discrimination. If you look at the life of all these widows, they are highly discriminated in this in our society. I know to help achieve this million development good, the foundation is seeing how they will be recognized. And we believe if you're talking about the issue of employment, 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 there should be a quota given in order to employ these widows, in order to help them not to feel as if they are discriminated from the society. Help a widow. You have so many of them in your family, around the, where you are living, even in your workplace, in your church. Help a widow. You, can, you don't need to have millions to be able to help a widow. You can pay a child one of their children's school fees for a term. You can give them money to rent house. How, the, the kind of houses they live is not even so an expensive house. Most of them, all jobs they need in a year is 24000 to pay for house rent, 36000 50000 they, they are not so expensive. Like all these widows now, when you don't have money to pay for your school, for your daughter's school fees, Definitely, the daughter will become a prostitute. Will come, he will start standing, hanging on the street. When you don't take care of your son, he will become a robber. He will start smoking and being being a tourist, a, 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 a distant to the state. So we, we government is supposed to come in and assist to make sure that this thing go to another level. Many of these women face harsh discrimination and social exclusion on account of their marital status. This compounds the discrimination they already face on account of their gender. Positive steps have been taken in some parts of the world to address this situation, but there is still a long way to go as 115 million widows still live in extreme poverty. In many cases, their children have to leave school to go to work and fill the gap in the household income left by their father's death. More than 1.5 million of these children die before the age of five. Widows' poverty, depriving their children of aspiration, education and future employment, affect the whole of the society. 
it is a humanitarian crisis. Since 2007, the Rock of Ages Empowerment Foundation has made it its duty to end the predicament of widows by embarking on financial empowerment, provision of free medical service, establishment of small-scale businesses, skill acquisition program to empower and build self-reliance, award of scholarship, and provide orphans with school fees, love and attention, and provision of accommodation and clothing, among others. In line with these objectives, we provide monthly gifts of food items to the less privileged widows. And again, we are looking forward that the next International Widows Day, our desire and our prayer is that God will make way for you that you will remember 5,000 widows. God will make a way for you that you will remember 100 widows. And when He make a way for you, He will open the door for you. He will make way to prosper you. Prosper your dream. Prosper your vision. What is it that you want the Lord to do? I have seen people who sent to us, who said, I'm praying to God for a husband. I forgot to give me a life partner. And then I want these widows to pray for me. And their prayer have really worked marvelously for them. And so many of them are smiling in their home. I have seen so many of them who came, telling that they are crying for the fruit of the womb. They sowed in their life with tears. And God gave to them joy in return. It could be your own turn. I've met so many business entrepreneurs who came and cried that they were looking for opportunity to for breakthrough in business. They came and planted in the life of these widows. And before you know it, they prayed with the names and cried to the Lord about the person. And then before you know it, the door opens. I've seen so many.